Thanks everyone for coming to the last session of the day. My name is Tommy. I'm a, a senior software developer at IBM. And today we are going to talk about how to um, training like AI to code using the largest um, code data set called CodeNet that we have released. And in the past few decades, we have you know, focused a lot on you know, training AI on natural languages. But there's also like different kind of uh, other form of languages that we use in a day-to-day -day basis, such as in the molecules, we have different kind of representations for molecules, stories, imagery, and especially for coding as well. And today, we want to focus on how we actually want to emphasize on um, building AI for code. And uh, as a part of our initiative um, in IBM Research, we have this um, new you know, program called I uh, AI for Code, which we want to focus on teaching the you know, machine the language of machines. And it is very new in terms of like um, fields in computer science, and we leverage a lot of the you know core concepts such as NLPs, document understandings, and you know core analysis and compilation techniques. And the goal of um, the, his whole initiative is actually helps um, you know create new models to help automate the you know software engineer process and able to help them improve their productivities. And in addition to that, we want to like create you know, tools to help the you know, software developer to build you know, practical tasks such as you know, code search, summarizations, completions, and code to code translations. And with all these tools, right, we are hoping to be able to um, accelerate the developer to you know, um, modernize legacy software and help them migrate you know, modern analytics um, software into like, a new you know, microservice architectures. And you look in the past, right, uh, when ImageNet just announced, um, they first have like 3 million image and you know, 5,000 class. And just within three years of spam, they were able to like, expand it to like 14 million images to, and 22,000 of classes. So the data could you know, ex um, expand very fast in like, a few year um, spams. And with a big, a big data sets like uh, you know, ImageNet, um, you know, developers and scientists is able to like, um, spend like, just put in five years from like um, you know more than thirty percent of error rates right um, from the beginning and able to achieve like human accuracy right just within five years of developments and research times and we want to do the same thing with like AI for code so and we also see like, a lot of the like, potential business use case as we see like, a lot of the governments and banking automobiles software they're still using like you know legacy codes like COBOLs right and there's like, more than two um, hundred twenty billion lines of you know legacy COBOL codes. And as we are aware, like, we don't have that many you know, COBOL developers that are able to translate this into modern technologies. So this is why we need to develop tools to accelerate this effort so we can migrate like, like ancient legacy technology into a new architectures. And when we actually look back into how we have done for natural language processing, when you know, like deep learning first introduced uh, in like, you know, early 2011s, we in just five, six years of spams, you know, with deep learning and GPU accelerations, all the research, we we're able to achieve like human level accuracy just within six years. And even in IBM, we were able to like produce a lot of NLP based, you know, services and document understanding using these new like uh, AI technologies. So we want to focus the same technologies on code as well. So it helps us to do NLP and MLs for you know software artifacts automate reasoning and decision making, and furthermore, it's one that's able to explain like, how this code is being generated, so we create an explainable AI as well. And with all this, we need to create a new data set, right, just similar to ImageNet in open source, so you know, developers could use this to create, you know, like code language translation, code search, code similarities, um, code perf uh, performance improvement, and uh, code memory improvement, and code classifications, or right? examples, and algorithms. So, we got to use this and put into like um, more specific use case for each developers. And this is why we want to announce um, the Project CoNet. We have released the Project CoNet um, data set to the open source last year. Um, this data set is actually a high quality code data set of um, algorithmic innovation and benchmarkings. It is very large scale, so you can see there's 40 million of code samples, right? more than 4,000 um, code problem is out there. And it covers um, 55 different languages from like COBOL, ancient legacy language to like the latest modern C++, Java, Python language as well. And all of the core are actually well tested and they also provide like, various test cases. So you get to use um, training on top of the different test cases and make sure that like, you could 
um, understand how this code are being ran and how this code is being failed as well. And from some of the examples we have seen, like uh, the potential use case is actually modernized, you know, legacy codes. So uh, one of the uh, clients we have is like uh, model, um, automotive clients. They have very old, you know, like um, stack of Java legacy codes, multiple version monolithic applications, more than uh, 3,500 Java files and more than a uh, million lines of codes. And we want to you know, mi even migrate them into like, modern architectures. And in our initial effort, when we actually ex estimate how many developers and how many effort we need to spend, it actually at least need to take us a year to migrate all these you know, um, code into like, modern Java versions. Um, that's why we kind of initiate like, um, the AI for code you know, um, project and then able to build some models to help us accelerate and we architect find out like code that need to be you know refactors and after building these models right this model able to help uh, our developers to you know reduce the time from a year down to like four weeks of modernize all this code into like uh, 25 different microservices and 450 different java classes and running in the latest um, java versions and furthermore we could also um the, the AI is able to like help us comprehend like how much runtime and data dependencies we have right, for this code and able to expose like any dead code that is no longer uh, being used or is no longer um, um, suitable for uh, the new applications. And as with this, um, when we open source you know Project CodeNet, we want to see like um, uh, put this data set out to the open source. So open source you know, developers could create new algorithms, new new methods to train these data sets, and a new way to compute this data set using you know, new technique of uh, data parallelism and model parallelism. And once we have enough you know, research, then anyone could just put in their AI system stacks, you know, fit into their own specified like, data sets to do like transfer learning, build their own models, and input their own you know, business pipelines. And once at the end, once like all this effort has been done, then we're able to like use this new kind of creative model to you know enhance our business uh, values, such as you know, modernize legacy codes and boost you know their productivity. So now I want to dive into the, what is this you know corner data set and what is actually you know contained. So corner data sets have you know as we described have a lot of languages, fifty five different languages. Um, most of them are composed with like modern languages like C plus plus, Python, Java, C, and Ruby. But we also have like ancient, you know, um, code like you know um, language like Cobos, um, where you can actually use them to do like code translation and understand how like um, legacy code is being coded, you know, in the modern, you know, um, coding problem as well. And you kind of break down into like how each language, uh, what what kind of uh, problem is contained with each language. 80% um, of the problem actually have more than 100 solutions in each of these 55 languages. And you know, more than half of these problems is actually accepted, so they're actually like um, workable examples. But you also have the other half where you provide you like uh, mistaking examples or runtime error, uh, memory error, so you could actually like use them to figure out when a developer create a different, uh, like wrong kind of solution, you could be able to uh, find out like, how to uh, optimize them and tell them the uh, right solution to recode that uh, into the right way. And um, when we open source this data set, like we have, that's, this is how we kind of collect all this data. So we actually like, you know, um, talk to the uh, Azure online judge and uh, add code and help, help them, uh, ask them to be able to collect those data for us. Um, this actually contains like, more than 4,000 um, problems and have more than 30, uh, 30 million uh, submissions, right? And as we described before, like um, more than half is actually accepted solutions. Only up about 30% is wrong answer, and 16% you know, is rejected with different reasons, right? Like memory error, uh, runtime error, etc. And within this 55 kind of language, um, you know, the main six um, languages: C++, um, Python, Java, C, Ruby, C Sharp, and they are all coming into different version as well. So you could do, um, they have different kind of version of C++ and Java solutions. And with C++, there's more than 8 million sub submissions and more than 4 million is accepted. So C++ is like kind of like the biggest data set we have in um, CoNet. And um, you break down how this data is being collected. So the, this data is actually like um, a computer programs in a particular um, like programming language. 
And each of them, each of those programs only contains like, one single files and able uh, is try to attempt like a particular programming task or problems. And a lot of them have like multiple solutions. So you could have multiple solutions, multiple runtime, a uh, different approach to actually uh, tackle this problem in all, all different languages. And at the end, once we collect all these kind of uh, data, we actually like make sure it's all certified under the uh, CDLA um, permission V2 that is defined in uh, Linux foundations. So this is actually like uh, able to uh, good for every open source developer to use it and do development research for their own models. Um, so let's dive into a little bit on like, what kind of metadata it actually prov provides. So for um, each of those problems, like, we have defined like, uh, uh, kind of like ID names, you know, time limit, memory limits, and complexity that's required for these kind of problems. And when it down to submission levels for each of these problems, right, um, each submission is able to like, identify how many CPU times, memory times, accuracy is being um, produced, right? Because we have a tons of you know test cases, we're able to calculate how how much accuracy you could um, satisfy with these solutions. And um, once the submission is done, um, what, whether or not it passed or no pass, we will uh, output a status. So this actually help you filter out like what kind of um, problems that you want to like categorize. So not only just a problem could be just pass or fails, but it also could like um, determine whether or not this problem is like. Um, uh, exist the time limit, memory limits, or it, it just have like wrong uh, runtime or output. And furthermore, so with all this kind of information we have, uh, we also provide like different tools and examples on how you get how you could get started with this um, you know data sets. So the tool we provide uh, is like um, statistic from the data set, like the stuff you have seen before. So we have. Um, like tools to how you generate different statistics, you could get subset of the uh, data set as well um, using our tools. And also like you could convert this kind of data set into like different kind of data formats, right? So by default, it's just like, um, you know, uh, code files, but you could also convert them into like a stack of files or, you know, put them into text files as well. And we also provide different kind of pre-processing, you know, source files to deter depending on what kind of, you know, um, model you want to train you might want to do different kind of pre-processing and we provide like some simple tools like a tokenizer to generate a stream of tokens. If you want to build like traditional, you know, um, abstract syntax tree, we could have like AST generation as well. And you want to do like just control and um, the data uh, flow graph. And we also have like code analysis to help you to do that. And we also have like, a few, you know, initial experiment we have put out that anyone in the open source could just try. So we have like some simple, you know, uh, GNA experiments. Um, that people could just you know train them in their you know deep learning frameworks. Um, we also create like some simple you know mass language models, so you could get start with like um, simple mass language and you know build on top of like different bird models, and also like uh, create you know token based similarity classifications. And um, for all these experiments, right, um, two of them, the mass language model and the um, you know to token based similarity classification, we also have like a very simple notebook to you know help you train a very small model just to see how it could be work right um, step by steps. So we also have like notebook just you know guide you how to do that from pre-processing to actually producing your models and test it out uh, on the mass language model and language classification that we have uh, built. And with all this kind of information and tool, we are actually aiming to expose like potential use case right with these data sets. Because we could see like um, AI for code could help you know developer to do you know code classification to know what language the code is, um, how to do like code similarity search. So you, when you want to identify a particular problem, you could just you know search it based on the topics, and then you could do like source to source code translation. So when you migrate from legacy code or older version of the code, um, it could help you like automate some of those process. So developer could just spend less time just on you know migrated uh, manually. Um, and lastly, it also um, more importantly is I like, want to help the to write much uh, better code and faster code. So um, uh, some of the kind of like technique we have developed is actually um, using natural language to generate code. So when you actually type down, let's say I want to like run array from two to five, and you could generate a function for me to do that. Um, and also, you know, it improve like existing you know code performance and memory footprint. So it will it will analyze you know code and. Uh, tell you the runtime complexity and able to provide you a better solutions. 
And then, of course, more importantly is like, um, the key for this is to help us, you know, find different error and debugging um, the existing code and create, you know, code uh, test generation. So make the code more robust in the, in the long terms. And uh, when we see out there, um, uh, we have multiple you know, existing application is being using this open source CSS. So in our IBM Air for code stacks, um, in IBM research, we're using it um, to do our core research. But we also see like the DeepMind Alpha code is also using the code as one of their training data sets. And we could see like they're able to use this data set um, to help them you know, achieve like human programmers 50 to 60% accuracy. Um, so let's dive into one of kind of the like, use case um, that we have, you know, um, figure out in like IBM Research. Um, you know, so last week, IBM Research just announced like this collaboration with Red Hat to create this new project called Project Wisdom. So the core concept of Project Wisdom is actually uh, help the developer to generate the you know, Red Hat Ansible playbook pipelines using just plain English. So it's um, a use case where you just provide simple English uh, context and create you know automations and infrastructure as code. And the, the main focus for us right now is actually just aim to build, develop a foundation models, right? And with, while keeping the accuracy high, we want to like, figure out how we can reduce the number of parameters so we, like, these new models are able to compute and we train like, in a decent amount of times. Um, as you can see in like, this like, page, when someone kind of like, put down a simple text on installing in Nginx and Node.js 12 package right, on Red Hat, um, it will be able to generate you some like scripts, right? Some uh, infrastructure as code in Ansible to help you like just run the install package. So this is kind of like very useful tools for anyone who just want to like do simple tasks, but they don't have any knowledge of uh, infrastructure and shell script. This could be like play a big role um, when someone wants to just do the automations without relying too much on the automation teams. But uh, with all this kind of information we have, right, uh, when we get through all this kind of research and like, we provide tools, put it out in open source, how we actually share all our fun things, right, like uh, we're in our teams or we're in the communities. Um, with this, uh, last year we actually announced a project called um, the Machine Learning Exchange. Um, and we work with the Alpha AI and Data and um, propose this as a um, Alpha AI and Data project sandbox. And now, um, this is actually um, hosting uh, on Alpha AI um, infrastructure as well. And the key concept with this is to provide a data and AI asset catalogs, right? Um, and furthermore, we also integrate some of the execution engines. So uh, for those who want to try it out in their own machine and see how these assets have been um, executed, they also could do that in their own clusters. Um, so some of the high levels on what uh, the machine learning exchange is actually uh, contains. So mainly this uh, machine learning exchange, the main purpose is actually sharing all these uh, catalogs. So we have different kind of like um, data assets such as data pipelines, components, models, data sets, and notebooks. Those are like the core components that all the data scientists have need to build and share within different teams. And um, I think the next step we kind of see from the catalog step is that when data scientists just want to try it out, like they want to just have a simple experiment. We actually like, leverage some of the execution engine we see in open source, so they could just they do a simple run and determine what kind of tool they want to use. Um, so for you know pipeline engine, we actually like leverage you know Qfo pipelines, and uh, because we actually run it on OpenShift, so we actually also um, it, uh, use the Tecton version of Qfo pipelines, so we could actually run uh, the Red Hat um, the OpenShift approved version of the uh, uh, Tecton runtimes. And for serving engine, we chose um, KServe, or we also have an option for you to just deploy on plain Kubernetes deployments. So KServe is actually a very popular project for deploying you know, serverless models on top of Kubernetes. Um, and then for data sets, we used um, a project called DataShim, where it could help you, you know, like, uh, host all your data um, sets into your local cluster and use them within um, your cluster nodes. And lastly, with all these kind of execution engine, we're actually able to fine tune our um, data and AI catalogs metadata and we build those metadata based on a spec called ML spec in open source as well. So with this, um, let me just show you like um, a, a default catalogs we have on uh, machine learning exchange in open source. So we have some like sample pipelines and components that you could you know like, get started with. And more importantly, we also have like 
different kind of models, um, data set and notebooks to help you see how what kind of like um, data and um, models people uh, have been trained and uh, how you get started with this model using a notebook as well. Um, and you could see like um, some of the you know, data sets like uh, Project CoNet and um, the IBM Debater data set is also on machine learning exchange as well. So with this, let me um, go on the uh, machine learning exchange demo. Um, so this is actually hosted in a public uh, website in uh, Alpha AI. So you go to um, ml-exchange.org. Um, you should be able to see a list of like catalog hosts on uh, machine learning exchange. So um, this is just only a catalog page because um, on, on the public side we don't have, we don't uh, leverage the run times. So, uh, but you could see what kind of like um, data set you could download and what kind of model you could use. So when you look at like the list of data sets, you could see like um, project code net, um, different kind of subset uh, project code and language classifier. And when you click on like, let's say the um, project code net, where you actually have like, different selections of the data set. Let's say the full data set, right? Like it, it might contain like several gigabytes of files. You might not able to download them in one fly. Uh, we also have different kind of you know, data selection where you, you want to just view the metadata or you only need a like, benchmark for Python, Java, C++. We could have like um, those selections for you, like preview over here already. And um, you want to just see how this metadata is being built and want to upload your own data set and propose your own data set in open source. Like this is a kind of preview of how the metadata is being stored in YAML. And similarly with the uh, models, so uh, we also have like different kind of models that you could write in containers or just upload as a uh, model files. So for example, we have this like uh, code net language classifiers. Uh, let's click into this. Um, so with this, we actually uh, have um, determined like, what kind of like, um, um, data set is used. So with this data set, we're using like CodeNet, so it's under the uh, CDLA permission V2. But also with the model weights and the model code, we actually um, make sure it's under um, Apache 2.0 license. So when you actually use this model to test or to play around, you guys should make sure like, this is actually certified under this uh, open source license as well. Um, and similarly with the pipelines, this is like we leverage like Q4 pipeline behind the scenes where you can actually see how you could build a you know, simple pipeline, just leverage multiple you know, tasks and join them together. So when the data scientists kind of build like a full bloom uh, pipeline that uh, do like different kind of data pre-processing, different kind of like data training with uh, how you distributed the training process, this could also build into a single pipeline and you know, upload it over here and share with different, you know, um, data science uh, teams. And each of those, you know, pipeline components also could be shared into the components categories. So this is like the category how each component is being built and you could connect them into a whole pipelines. And lastly, with um, the notebook is where if you wanted to see some examples and how these examples is being executed. Um, let's say for example, you could pick like the um, project code net um, math language models. Um, you could see like how, uh, where is this data, uh, where is this notebook is being hosted right, on GitHub. But you could also like uh, leverage uh, our kind of backend engine where we actually have you to render the notebook to preview on this page. You just want to feel like just render and stay on this page to see how you, um, you know, let's say for these examples for the mass language models, you could see like how, you know, uh, you could just take a subset of the model from CoNet, prepare the data, right? Um, do some kind of tokenization and uh, create a, you know, a bare bone bird models. And at the very end, right, like it, it able to train within just using CPUs um, within an hour. And we, at, for this example, we make it very small. So we just train for five epochs and just show you some of the evaluation on, let's say you want to just predict, right, and um, master words, how you could actually rank like the top five accuracy by right? using a simple you know, math language model. This is like an example on how you could start learning and using the data set. Um, so with this, um, if you actually want to like, you know, find out like what kind of models or like data set you want to work on, and you just happen to want to like try it out on machine learning exchange, you can actually deploy on your own cluster and run on the cluster using our uh, integrated runtimes. So for example, it's, um, I have uh, one instance that is deployed um, on my development clusters. So I have imported the same kind of like um, data categories here. So um, let's say for example, if I go to um, 
equal language classification uh, class models. Um, in my own cluster, I enable like the execution runtime, so, so I could actually able to launch these models right on on my Kubernetes and try it out. So let's say I just wanted to launch this model as a plain you know deployment um, container and you know, test it out. I could just simply um, do like launch and behind the scenes, right? De depending how you actually train the model or serve the models, you could actually have a preset pipeline to help you, you know, get the data trainer. But for this example, we just have like a simple pipeline where we get the model information and deploy on uh, our cluster using the latest image um, that, that we have registered. So once the um, pipeline is finished, it will just show us like um, whether the deployment is, is available. And um, for, for this pipeline, I actually configured to deploy on um, um, no ports while on Kubernetes. So uh, with like a kind of IP and a notebook, we're able to like just try it out. So with the node port we have is 3.11.74. So if I just do here. Um, so with this way, um, behind the scene, this pipeline just kind of expose these models as a uh, REST API server. So you can actually uh, leverage kind of like this uh, Swagger UI. And this model is extremely simple, so you could see like these APIs only have like two methods, get and post. And you could just try out with this model just by sending, you know, some files. For example, let's say we submit like um, Python files here. And we could try out these examples able to produce us the top three, you know, uh, accuracy um, on the, you know, language classification. So you could see like Python is the highest accuracy rate with almost 70%. And then you could kind of see how, you know, this model has been built and can it give you some ideas on how you could leverage, you know, CodeNet and um, use this to, you know, enhance your user experience and able to build tools to help you, like, um, enhance uh, your developer cycles, right? Um, on migrating codes, building codes, and completing codes. So, um, with this, I will just gonna summarize like what we have um, discussed today. So. Um, the main point we are going to show is that we want to open source this um, project CodeNet. This is like the uh, high quality, uh, very big data sets we have created. And we want to see like, um, we, we post it in the open source and we want to see that the open source community is able to leverage it, build it, and able to like give us feedback. And hopefully we, in the next five years, we will have like very good tools to help us migrate different kind of legacy codes, uh, able to like enhance their effort, able to code them in a new ways instead of like in the current way where we have to go like, let's say, start overflow to find a solution, right? right? Like that's kind of like the goal we aim for. And um, once we kind of see that being, being um, going in progress, then we we're able to like leverage some of those um, kind of like open source models and put into kind of like production AI um, system stacks. And with um, production AI system stack, then we have able to develop like business values such as actually able to uh, use those uh, like future models to help us do like automatic, you know, code translation and modernize legacy code with very minimum effort. So with this, um, I would just say uh, thank you very much for everyone attending. And does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes, please. Uh, yes, so um, I would say like some of the kind of like public announcement we have, I think one of the newest announcements we have is the project wisdom. So we actually work with like the Red Hat team to actually build new tools uh, to do like code generation for auto automation and infrastructure as code. So we hopefully to help like Red Hat developers to able to do automation by just, you know, um, uh, putting like a plain English text, right? So this just describe your workload and build a Ansible pipeline for you. This is kind of like one of the use case. And other customer use case um, we have done um, is actually like help us modernize, you know, old Java code into new Java code. So those are like kind of the use case we currently have. But we also like envision like more um, use case that in our open source and hopefully like people could give us feedback and we could able to use those feedback to enhance and improve this data set over time. Uh, sure, yeah, go ahead. Uh, 
Right. Uh, yeah, let me repeat the question. So uh, I think the question is around like how we gonna approach you know different uh, institution like bank, you know to um, migrate you know old legacy code like COBOL to like the modern technologies. Um, so I think at this moment for the research and open source team, uh, we actually just um, want to leverage you know kind of different um, use case and uh, a lot of the kind of research we have done is um, more on like. Um, research and development. So when it comes to the kind of clients, um, I, I, I think like um, we do have like client engineer team that work with different clients, but uh, we don't have any like particular data that we could expose at this moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe uh, someone behind, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the question is like how we envision you know this data set to brought into actual real like proposition and values to real customers, right? Um, so I think it in it, we are still kind of in an initial stage. Um, I think as we kind of see it in like different kind of AI roadmaps, when you know a new data set is being created, new method is being created, it usually takes several years, right, to actually able to achieve like um, like more real world or like um, more sustainable use case. So um, right now, I think our main kind of commitment is actually like show what kind of um, use case that we have and also like, it, like open source this data set to the community so anyone could just use it without any risk. And uh, from there, we, uh, from a research team and open source team, we actually like, want to just leverage feedback from the open source. Um, and of course, if you have any like particular customer, uh, customer like kind of requirements, uh, I think at this moment, um, it's actually just based on whatever company you work with, like they get like internal feedbacks. But on the open source side, we actually want the community to show us right how your know, different research paper and different like open source use case um, um, that have you know kind of like just um, posted on uh, de uh, like developer blogs and use those feedback to help us you know improve and build a like, new kind of models that le could leverage data sets. Um, yes, um, is there any other question or if not, then yeah. Right. Right, I, I think like right now, um, we, we do have like 55 different languages right, for our initial kind of data sets. So uh, as you can see, like even for the COBOLs, right, like we, we kind of describe over here. Um, and with the COBOLs, like, we at least have like 100 solutions for them uh, for 80% of the problem. So um, with our initial kind of investigation, we do able to see like uh, a lot of the problem you could able to like um, solve like very simple. Um, but uh, as we kind of discussed, right, like, um, like this data set is more like for people to explore different kind of use case. And um, I think COBOL is something we are uh, still working at and to see like what kind of like um, performance we could get. Um, and um, I, I think that is a very like good kind of like, um, we, we see like a lot of good feedbacks from the research team already and they are already like kind of, you know, producing like kind of uh, those examples. Um, so, I would say, like, initially, I think we see enough uh, for at least for code generation. Uh, and at this part, we can see some good results. And we want to see communities, like, take it to the next level to, like, more advanced, you know, code translation and code completions. 
uh, from here. Yeah. Uh, is there any questions? Uh, yes, please. Uh, I, I would say more or less similar. Yeah, like I think uh, with OpenAI, right, as you mentioned, like uh, how OpenAI kind of leverage similar concepts. Because um, OpenAI is kind of like proprietary. We don't know what kind of code or models they use behind the scenes, so we cannot really say. But is the, the concept is similar, and what we want to envision here is like um, there's no good like, data set is being tested and have good test cases and verify in open source, right? I mean, you could also well scrap code from GitHub, but you have to like, I have someone to do labeling and test out everything for you. So um, this data set is actually aimed just like ImageNet. You could create like a benchmark on all the, let's say, models you build. And just to make sure like um, when you create a new use case, like you could use this, this data set as a benchmark to test whether or not um, your generator, let's say, um, Code is actually matching the one we have in our data set and you start to improve your model accuracy. Yeah. Um, is there any other question? If not, yeah, thank you very much uh, for attending. <laughs>